you know? Yeah, yeah, go now! Go yeah. now! <laughs> it says we're off air. They could no, safely they could safely land a 794 pound rover on a planet 33.9 million miles away, but they can't do a damn thing to improve this show. That's right. <laughs> it's time for the Mythwits. The show dedicated to, the show dedicated to all things geek, no end pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring you on industry guests to talk about the ever expanding geek reverse and to play a game with us. We do our damnedest to be funny, and god damn it, I guarantee you will laugh tonight. I'm your host, Mike Kafis, and I'm joined this week by my co host, Peter NaNoWriMo Bryant. That's me. Woo! <laughs> yes, sir. And our guests this week are Dave Robeson, Philippa Pip Valentine, and T. Morris. Howdy. Now, Howdy. Guys, these guys are creatives, they're writers, so they wrote their own bios. <clears throat> Sit back, relax, <laughs> and enjoy the ride. <laughs> Dave Robeson is a tough guy to nail down, but we have a very big hammer, so we're going to try. <laughs> He's a podcaster who launched the Roundtable Podcast back in 2012, with where writers brainstorm with their story ideas with veteran authors. And while... The podcast is currently in on hiatus. There are many more brainstorms planned for the future. He is a vocal performer, having narrated books and stories, podcast and is currently for Pseudopod. Hiatus. There Pod. Sorry. Okay. Podcastle. <laughs> Escape Pod. Casts of Wonders. The Drabble. The Drabblecast, and many more. And I just realized that I want him to narrate my official biography. <laughs> so that's a thing that's going to happen. Hell yeah. <clears throat> He's a guy I'd nail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's performed in audio dramas such as Hidden Harbor Mysteries by Jay Smith, as well as numerous live performances at conventions like our favorite, Balticon. Yeah. He is a colossal nerd who delights in role-playing games, comics, and fiction of a speculative nature. And most recently, he's become an entrepreneur, bringing his creative vision to the world of software with create with the creation of Archivos, Vos, Vos, the <laughs> story developing and presentation tool for writers, gamers, educators, and storytellers of all kinds. <sighs> Welcome, Dave. Ah. <clears throat> Delighted now, to be here. T and T and Pip, we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about your separate ones, but uh, I'm gonna read your your combined I'm one together. Lean back. Yeah. Yeah. Lean back. <laughs> no, honey. I'm gonna I, lean forward. I, I, I'm gonna I, lean I, forward. I wrote it for both of us, oh, yeah. darling. <laughs> <laughs> darling. We're a team. Thomas. There's no I in team. There might be a me, but there's no I in team. <laughs> and that's who they are. Thomas <laughs> T. Morris. Oh, God. And uh, Philippa Pip Valentine. Together, T and Pip created the Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences, the stories, the series, and its short fiction podcast, Tales from the Archives, won the 2014 Parsec Award for Best Science Fiction Anthology Podcast, the 2011 Airship Award for Best Steampunk Literature, and RT Reviews Choice Awards for Best Steampunk of 2014. In 2016, T and Pip released the first book in a new spin-off series, The Curse of the Silver Pharaoh, and continue to take the ministry to other collections, including Clockwork Cairo, Magical... Mechanication! Mechanications. We made that word up. <laughs> <laughs> and Clockwork Fairy Tales. <clears throat> and somewhere in the middle of all that, T and Pip released their Writer's Digest to go to how to book... How to... Uh, let me leave a reason that. Go to how to book. <laughs> yes. Their go to <laughs> how to book. This. Social <laughs> media for writers. <laughs> <laughs> this year, T and Pip released the book, the Books and Brawn Dossier, featuring their stories of the of the ministry since the inception of the world back in 2011. Has it been that long? It has been that long. Dang. T also returned to the popular, uh, returned to the popular for dummies line with his own approach to streaming with Twitch for dummies. Pete, you and I really need to read that. Uh, T and Pip also host the shared desk, a podcast 
covering collaboration and other aspects of the writer's lifestyle. T streams on Twitch weeknights and weekend mornings at twitch.tv forward slash the T monster and hosts the destiny, the destiny themed podcast happy hour with the tower found at happy hour from the tower.com. They enjoy a writer's life in Virginia alongside their daughter and three cats visit them online respectively at pjballantine.com and tmars.com. Jimmy's got the bell. And uh, Pete, roll, we guess, roll the closer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's all the time we have for tonight. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for <laughs> showing up. All right. All That's right. All right. Wow. That's been a lot. All right, Mike, you can take a break for a second there. Catch your breath. <laughs> so, the main focus of tonight, the main focus tonight, for once, your host gets to be the main focus. Although, everybody's going to get to talk about whatever they're doing. But, uh, the, the 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 season closes. This is our, this is our season five closer. So you guys should wow. feel honored. You're on. Our, these are our prime shows. Deeply. We save Deeply these for honor. special people. Um, <laughs> Apart from tea, we do. Apart from tea, except for tea. Uh, so, <laughs> so I participated in NaNoWriMo. So we wanted to have right. We wanted to have some some writer writers on. And, writer uh, and 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 Dave is a writer too. Dave, you did some. You've done some writing as well. I have. I have. And, Absolutely. Um, uh, and Dave also has Archivos, which is a writer's tool, a writer's toolbox of tools. A compendium. So, uh, so we're going we're to talk about all those things. So we're gonna I'm going to talk about let... Dave's box. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Tool laughs> I'm going to let, but I'm going to let you all lead the show. In that, um, you oh, know, you can. A, I don't know. Is let... that a choice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't I know, know if I have a choice with you guys. You're nanoing, right, Pete? Yes, New... I am. Oh. All right, I got questions for you, motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. There you yes. go. There you go for it. All right. Yeah. What, is, what has been – now, first of all, have, okay, lead-up questions. This is not the question. How many nanos have you done? This one. This is your one. first nano. And you are on track to get – <laughs> You're on your on track to get your 50K in that 30 is, days, right? That is, okay. that is correct. What Ooh. has been your single biggest challenge – that you have had to overcome to get to your where are you at now forty thousand however many very good um, real life no <laughs> in, in honesty yeah, that's exactly seriously. that's exactly what it is there there have been nights oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I fell behind um, so so writing sixteen hundred and sixty seven words a day is doable okay that's that, that's, but, a, that's a healthy number it's a healthy that's number it's a healthy number and it's doable it's totally doable even with a full time job and a kid and you know cooking dinner and shopping and all the things that you do you can still get that in however if something should come up like i don't know thanksgiving or <laughs> you you know you work actually thanksgiving was helpful in all reality but for some people it might not be let's say you're traveling out of town or whatever it can complicate things um there's also being tired getting sick working overtime anything any of that kind of stuff gets you in the way yep. um so there, there's been a there was like one night i did 700 words but i got i got 700 there was there was more than zero uh i think another night i got 450 and again more than zero, but then zero. that means that I have to, I have to do 1,200 extra, and then I have to do 900 extra. So this it just weekend, pile up. yeah, yeah, it does. It does, especially you know, it's really scary when you're looking at it and you're like, wow, I'm 3,000 behind, right? That's how much I'm behind. But then I also have to write my 1,667 for today. So I'm actually 4,667 behind when I wake up in the morning. So this weekend. <laughs> This weekend, I pumped out, I want to say, seven or 8,000 words. In that's, Ooh, respectable. that's very that's nice. Respectable. Nice. Very nice. And it, it was like, dude, I, I got to tell you. It's, a bit, like, I have, it's a bit like a credit card. You know, yeah. you start off the credit card, you're making the payments, everything's good, everything's great. Get behind and, on one. And then you get behind on one, you're like, no, nah, no, nah, I can make up with this. I can make up with this. And then a couple months down the road, you're just like, well, I'll just, I'll, I'll just do the minimum payments for a couple. Of Next thing you're like, how the fuck did I get $10,000 in the hole? Right. No what shit. The yeah. Fuck, and, and dude, man. it was, T, it was exactly like that because yes. there were, there were days where I was just like, making the minimum payment. I got my 1,667 yeah, yeah. in, right? Oh God, but meanwhile, I'm still interest, behind 3,000. Meanwhile, interest like you got a pretty mouth there, boy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes, yes. I, it, the only thing that would really kill you is if NaNoWriMo did have interest, you know, only in, in the payment version. Oh my yeah. God. 
You but might yeah, have a puppet now. Yeah, I but I stuck it out, Dave. I stuck it out. I I, sat I prefer at this, syrup. I, yeah. <laughs> I put this ass in this seat and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote. You, you, you got the discipline. Now okay. next year, when you do nano again, what are you gonna do differently leading up to it and during it? Ooh, what could I do differently? Okay. I suppose um, I could not agree to do things for other people in that month. <laughs> yeah. Cancel uh -huh. everything. That's a good, there you go. Yeah, yeah, respect yeah. your time. Budget right. time box your time. Good call. Right. No, no. Right. Don't respect your time. Be selfish about your time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Why could you know? What part of nano? That's why it's called nano. Man, as no. a no, bitch. I got shit to do. I said, nah, no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nah, nah. Oh, no, but nah. yeah, okay. So I, I need to do that. And I also. The, uh, you was, know what? Next year. Go what, real you, well, T. You're going to get him in serious trouble. <laughs> next next year, Pete. We got, a, we got to, a guest room. It's cool. <laughs> you have to make me a very detailed honeydew list so that okay. what my, my things that I need to do, my share, that I don't burden you with, like, um, what, what, when you said the, I, I just have to do this, what does that mean? What, right. <laughs> what, what does just interview these guests <laughs> for, for this other? Because we, we, we did, on top of everything, poor Pete and I, we agreed to uh, uh, be guest interviewers for a, uh, what is this? Uh, Aethercon. Uh, Aethercon. Aether, Aethercon no, online no. role-playing oh, convention. Dude. Oh, so, man. so you know, we're, like one weekend, like he lost, I know he lost a whole weekend. He lost <laughs> like a payment and a half for that weekend. Yes, oh, I did. So I did. And, that, and now it's, it's like we're editing videos and I'm like, dude, I, I want to help. I want to edit. I'll do your share of editing. And I'm like, I don't have my, 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 my premiere is not up to date. It's not the latest one with what you guys are using. It's saying, Pete, it's saying this. What do I do? Right. <laughs> and just like, I just see, I see him going. Oh, no, Mike, Mike, this is this is what you see. Hold on, wait a minute. It's what? What? I don't know. <laughs> oh yes, that look of panic. I know that look. Yes. Getting me out we of my zone, do. man. Yeah. 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 We, we all see that in the mirror when we're yeah. up against oh. time deadlines like that. Oh, and Dave, you know another thing I might not do? I might not get a puppy. Like four months before, that that would help. <laughs> oh man! Okay, good. Yes. Wow. Having, Why didn't you just child, have a kid? Have a child have a, right just have a kid. Animal? No, yeah. don't do that. Self sabotage yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. it okay, is. Okay, so it is. the things you're not gonna do, what are you gonna do? How about positive okay. things that you can do that will make your nano experience more productive? Okay. All right, so one of the things that I did that made my nano very productive this time, which I will repeat next time, was is I worked from a pretty uh, beefy outline and I had character studies written up for all my characters all my main characters so nice. when I sat down to write now I won't have the benefit this time that I had this for the book I'm doing now because one of the benefits I had for the book doing that I'm doing now is that I had 10 years of wanting to write it and 10 years of <laughs> ideas so I'm not I'm not gonna have the 10 years but it, it's gonna I'll probably do the sequel so it'll probably flow into it fairly nicely because I kind of know where I want the I know where I want the story to go after this one so now, so I'll on. have, hold that, I'll have thought. That. hold that thought T and Pip you guys have written sequels is there a, a launching point or is there a is there momentum that comes from building off of an existing story when you launch into a sequel oh for sure it, it gets it gets much easier in certain <laughs> ways because you already know the characters you already yes. know the world but then of course there's the horrible thing where they like i want exactly what you had in the sequel but different please yeah <laughs> yes. could you make it exactly the same only like really different and do yes, all new yes. stuff because if you do exactly the same they'll go hey we saw that before in the first one so <laughs> so okay so so and and the thing the thing is you want to find something that is that is just like it, but different. That does not equate as more. Uh, yes. case, case do not do Spider Man where you don't just do Spider Man adding, three. Adding more people in. Don't, don't keep do adding. don't do Batman and Robin. Definitely, for God's sake, never put nipples on the super suit. Um, but the oh. but the other thing. But, it's always down to the nipples. But but here, here's a good example. So yesterday <laughs> yesterday Pip and I saw uh, saw Ralph breaks the internet. Mm. Mm. And let me tell you something. That movie. I was nervous because I loved Wreck It Ralph. Wreck oh, yeah. It Ralph was my childhood. They could have wrecked it. Ralph Breaks the Internet is my second childhood. 
They nice. they had they had nods to stuff that I mm. do in Destiny, and there's a, there's a, this is the only spoiler I'm going to give you. There was a scene where they took you to a to one of the shadier shadier sides of the internet when you click a pop up, and where they took you, the guy had a mounted unicorn head from Fortnite on the wall. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> that gives you that gives you the level that they brought it for Ralph breaks the internet. This nice. movie did not disappoint in any way, shape, or form. But it didn't nice. like. It didn't retread old ground. It didn't retread old ground. No. It took the same characters that everybody loved and put them in a new situation where they could expand and do learn different things and have and different so, character acts. So the characters become deeper and richer. Yeah. So the yes. goal you, of the you would hope that, so. And, well, yeah. and, and yeah. the other big bonus, uh, I could listen to Gal Gadot read a phone book. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. no doubt. I mean, I mean, I know everyone thinks oh she's beautiful. God. Now she's he's going to be spending is. 30 minutes on and Gal And she Gadot. is, but Gal fucking Gadot. Gal hey, fucking, she is now, gonna have she's a, a, <laughs> she well, is if a, you start on that, I'm going to start on my Idris Elba. Right? I'm just and saying, she's, she's propelled to hey, the top oh of the list. Hey, hey, hey Pip. List. Pip, they are both sexy motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Them I got, hold on, hey, hold look, on. look, I, they're I ain't in a movie together. Yeah, there you go. Hey, so hey Pip, there you I, go. Got, I ain't gay, but I'd hold Idris Elba's hand in jail. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm getting line for that one. <laughs> What's that, Dave? So, so there you go, Pete. So your, so your sequel next year, you'll have momentum and impetus, but the goal is not to make it more and bigger and add more characters, but rather find new scenarios for the existing characters to deepen everyone's appreciation and their own character terrain. Yes, that's what well, we did, right? Well, I will, <laughs> I will tell you this. I will, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm gonna, you don't even know anything about the story, but I'll tell you this. I've, I've planted, I've planted three seeds already. There are three seeds that will not be resolved in the first story that will blossom in the second story. And you'll go, holy fuck, that was in the first one the whole time. Yes. And it's, so it's going to be good. But and apart from that, Mr. Martin, when will you be finishing the next book? <laughs> <laughs> next year. Just, be next year. Just, don't, next just, 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 just keep, the, keep it tight, Channing. Keep it tight. You know, Wait a minute. Do. Wait a minute. You are not putting this on hold for another year, right? No, 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 no. We said writing. next book. Oh, no, no, Mike, that's, said, that's my question. That's my question. That's my no, question. You said next uh, book, are, right? are we Are we doing this? Are we, now, are we doing this as sort of like, like, the... like, like, like tough questions for Pete? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, oh, sure, sure. sure, yeah, grill All right, sure. then Pip, you're up. Well, now that you, well, as you reach the end of Nano and you hit your 50K and you go, wee, and you post all sorts of memes, woot, yep. um, you're going to keep writing though, right? Yes. Bitch, yes. you stole my thunder. Ah, so, so, no, I, so, no, no, look. That is my, my entire reason for existence, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for this one because I've already prepared. I have the, uh, now someone asked in, uh, a Tori asked in the chat room, so this leads, this is a nice segue into that question. Um, yes, this is, this is based on this. This story wraps around the short stories that I've read at Balticon the two years. So those oh, cool. those two stories that are we've actually read, that we that we've read. read. Yes, the erotic it's, fiction that John no, Walker has helped yeah, us yes, read. Yes, yes, John Walker's erotic imagination of my story. <laughs> yes. So there's 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 two short that. stories which are actually really long short stories. They're I mean they're they're good beefy short stories. Uh, they you know Mike I did the word count like combined they're about fifteen thousand words. So you're going to take the 50K, you're going to stick 15,000 on that, right? Then mm -hmm. I've got probably another maybe 35,000 after that, we'll see. But maybe another 35,000 after that to wrap the story up. Um, so that's a good that's, size. That's, that's a good a, size. That's what genre? Thing. What genre? Okay, so it's fantasy, but mm -hmm. it's, it is a... Uh, how can I put that? It's Alternate a, reality urban fantasy kind of it's science it's it's all right so i decided when i was going to do uh, when i decided that i was going to do a fantasy story because i'm a sci-fi guy i love sci-fi i wanted to do fantasy from a scientific standpoint now you won't see any of that in the story at all none of it when you're reading the story no seriously when you're reading the story it's going to be a fantasy story right because that's part of my goal but on the back end, everything's explainable by science. So there are no monsters. There are animals. There are creatures. There is magic is all based upon like a pseudoscience-y quark theory or um, string theory type of thing that I've come up with. Um, so it, it all, it, it, I can explain it all by science, but I'm not going to do it in the book because that's boring. I want the book to be a fantasy book. But if, if people get interested once this book comes out uh, and they want to go to the web page and read about all the stuff, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put all the, the behind-the-scenes stuff in there. Uh, 
uh, that explains yeah. all of the sciencey stuff. They can go research if they want to. If they want to stay, nope, it's a fantasy. I don't care what Pete says. Then they can just keep that, and it's a fantasy for them. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I've got. Um, I'm gonna hit probably a hundred and some. Now, I have a question for the writers. Okay, for the for writers in the room. Now you hear about first draft, second draft, and, and third drafts, right? When I get done this first writing, you know, I haven't been going back and editing anything because that's Good. kind of they say don't do that, just yes, keep I going. Do that. I didn't. Yeah. So what does first? I wish I didn't. When when is it first draft? Is first draft after I go back through and fix all the crap that I that I wanted to fix, or I mean, is first draft. You know what I mean? Or do I give it to other people first and to, let them? To me, first draft is when you've you've finished and then you've gone through and re and done some self-editing yourself. Right. Second draft is when you send it to an editor or okay. and somebody else and they go give you, you know, like developmental edits and, you know, and pick up or beta readers. If you've got a bunch of beta readers, they come, okay. you let them loose on it and then they come back with a whole bunch of stuff saying this character didn't act right or this didn't make right. much sense. I didn't understand that. That's right, to right. me is when you're going into your second draft. Why, Do why you disagree it... with me? So for me, the first draft is Probably. when, is when you're, you finish the, the story. And uh, when, once you finish the story, whether it's a short story, novella or novel, that is your first draft when you say, okay, it's done. Then you go back and you look and you go, Oh, okay. Well, here's our second draft. And, uh, and the second draft to get is something I, the way I define it is that you do it solo. Third draft is is probably when the editor steps in, and that's when you start getting into developmental edits and things like that. And so you do disagree with me? I do. Well, because well, it's I only, do it well. It's only, I'm shocked. It's, it's, I'm shocked. Oh my it's, God. it's only it's my you know what the, <laughs> And I'll, I'll Dave, say this: when you're when you're um when you're when when you're do, working independently, sometimes your your second and third draft becomes deep developmental drafts. I remember, I remember uh, serious disagreements. Um, when we were writing Curse of the Silver Pharaoh, but the problem was that we were not communicating very well during that. And we had to fix some stuff. And there was one night where I, I shit you not, guys, I was sleeping on the couch. With his eyes yeah. Open. She was pissed. It. She I was pissed. Kind of like you'll be tonight. <laughs> and then, and then, then T with one eye open was, like, like this. She wouldn't, she wouldn't say it. She wouldn't say it, but she read it. And, she, and I said, is everything okay? She goes, it's fine. Oh. And I was sleeping on the couch. Yeah. 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 And I was sleeping on the couch. It's fine. <laughs> It's fine. You're, you're, you're gonna make yourself comfortable there, but it's fine. And right. then she would be like, she'd be like, yes, yeah, it's, it's actually fixes love for all these reasons. Don't worry. Right. <laughs> um, but but the thing is, that's what a draft is. And I don't think I, I don't count the developmental edits or the line edits as drafts. I I when you when you submit this to a um to an editor, it really should be as clean as possible. Yeah, but that's still a first draft. First, second draft is editor. But the fi no, the final draft, the final draft is when everything is everything is done. <laughs> kids, kids, don't make me come back there. All, All right, right, listen. So, so, uh, I, I have, I have, a, I have a quick sidebar yeah. question because okay. a couple people in the in the chat room want to know. Uh, T, what are you drinking? Oh, <laughs> actually, it's going to be very disappointing. It's water with fruit in it. Wow. Well, yeah. Sorry. It's all what do you, want, do you want me to get a beer? Do you uh, want me to get a beer? I can yeah. go get, ask your chat if you want me to go get a beer. I will get a beer. Or a scotch. Beer. Or scotch. Mm. Or yeah. scotch. Well, the cigar. Let, let them decide. Well, Easy why don't now you, on the cigar. Stop smoking on the I'm house. I'm not going to smoke in the house. Why don't you ask your wife what you could get her? Yeah, you can get me Yeah, a, that's a good idea. You can get me a... Bitch, your legs aren't broken. You can Ouch. go and get yourself something if you want. God, I'm trying. I'm oh, trying wow. so hard. Wow. Hey, oh, ow. Oh, I am ow. trying. Oh. That was my nutsack. Oh. I'm going to hide. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm over here, Mike. I'm, over here. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm right here. Hi, everybody. <laughs> 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 I, think, I, th I think I think I have one of your one of your you know my, my, my one teenage. of your adolescent adolescent teenage coolers in there. I'll go get oh you something, God. darling. Be coolers. right back. I have all go, the drinking. Hey, go get me a Zima. A no. <laughs> nice. T, go make me a sandwich. Hey, so, so, sandwich while you're there, so so Dave, what do you what is your thought on on the draft? Honestly, I, I my my question is uh, uh, why do you ask? Uh, what, what what is it about? the structuring of the development of a story that's important to you? Well, I want to, okay. So I want there to be a flow. So like, um, 
So as you're reading it, you're not disjointed. So as you, as you're going through and you're and you're reading it, you know, action ramps up to action, or it hits you in the face because that's what you wanted it to do in that scene. I just okay. want, I want as you read it, I want that feel to be there, and I don't want two people talking, and and like there's just a disconnect or, or disjointed. It's not like a real conversation to where you're taken out of it. Cause I do a lot of dialogue. I'm a, di I'm dialogue heavy. You are. Um, and it's beautiful. Yeah. I love dialogue. I love dialogue yeah. in my stories. It, it, yeah. Cause as soon as you hit a dialogue section, the book starts moving. There's, yeah. there's things are happening. People, things happen more quickly in dialogue, yeah. at least emotionally. You uh, learn, you learn more about the characters by what they say. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. With, with that in mind, then uh, I, I'm, I wouldn't, necessarily concern yourself on which draft is it the second or the third right. uh so much so as in order to achieve what you're trying to achieve which is i think noble and laudable and oh there's a sound <laughs> i i just got libationally erect with that <laughs> libation we need to use that in a book yes it's fantastic eliza i believe i've become libationally erect <laughs> Copyright, patent pending, Reg, Reg US pat off. Um, that deserves a stiff so drink. In order, a stiff drink, yes. Some hard, hard cider, perhaps. Um, oh. Anyway, let's Cider? Go. I hardly... All right, come on now. Come on now. So, in order to get to that point, okay, Pete, the first thing you need to do is what everybody says about the first draft. You got to tell yourself the story. You need a complete story. Don't fuss with flow and pacing and tempo and rhythm and and the nuanced elevation of this that and the other you tell the story you get all the shit that's supposed to happen on paper because you can't edit a blank page and all the other euphemisms and cliches right. that everybody throws out there um at that point then uh and this is going to be different for every single writer uh, uh you f you either go scene by scene, chapter by chapter, and structure those individual moments, those compact, compressed moments of scene that you can say, okay, this scene is good. Do that as a as a pass, perhaps. And these are just <clears throat> suggestions. You might have your own right. style. Right. But then you step back and you say, okay, how does this scene say with this scene? Now you're looking at a larger dynamic, a larger narrative arc. Uh, uh, you want that first act or the first major beat or whatever. Do the same thing. Do these flow together? <laughs> of course, by this time you've gone through it four or five times in your own experience. Your understanding of all the things that are happening is much clearer now. So you can start anticipating, oh, yes, but if I do this, there's this thing happening in act yeah. two or on down the road. Yeah. So it's, you know, first tell the story, work with a scene, 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 polish, 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 and then start cobbling together those larger chunks until the big chunk, the story itself, is laid out. And then exactly as T, P, T and Pip said, give it to beta readers, give it to editors, uh, have them tear every foundation of structure uh, that you thought you knew about your story out from cry. under you. Cry, you must cry. Weep, weep and drink heavily, uh, uh, and then, we got that part fine. <laughs> and then resume. I, I, I don't don't worry about whether you're on the first draft or the second draft. It's it's what are your benchmarks of storytelling achievement and how far are you along in achieving those benchmarks? It's not the bet there's there's not just one benchmark of getting it published. So it's the stage is back. I, I think it's when you when because when you're writing, I don't know if if this is if T's going to totally negate whatever I say, but <laughs> for me, when I'm writing it, I start off loving it, and then as I get towards the end, I start to doubt it. So to me, the first draft is done when <clears throat> I feel happy with it again and I don't hate it. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and so, I was just going to um, say that I would well, hold on real quick. I was just going to I was going to say that from what Dave was saying and from what you're saying, I I kind of feel that way. Like just I'm not there yet, so I don't know what I'm going to feel like once I get there. But I feel that I don't want to hand it to anyone else till I'm happy with it. And I but I, but I know when I'm happy with it, that doesn't mean it's perfect. That means no. it's perfect in here. It's not perfect out there where it needs to be perfect. Right. And then I hand it off to them, <laughs> and then they like you said they destroy my baby they <laughs> molest my baby and i have to cut pieces of my baby out and change pieces of my perfect baby and then Pound of flesh motherfucker Pound of flesh. <laughs> yeah. but they, they will also praise your baby how how lovely its That's... nose is and its shoulder is so so delightful there will be bits that they will like because you right. are a writer you tell a good story so you know <clears throat> look look for those as well and and 
I, I don't have a lot of experience with beta readers. T and Pip can probably speak more to how to deal with that scenario. Well, well edit, uh, editors, I mean, the first ever editorial pass I got, I, I did actually cry. Like, a, like, a, like an actual baby. But then oh, my I, God. It's so hot. It's so hot. I, oh. I can't um, do this. I'm awful. Right. Um, but once you stop crying and you think about it and you're like, no, they're helping me polish up the bits and making it much, much better, then it's all worth it. And your baby looks much, much better at the end of it. And, um, you know, because they're not seeing it through rose-tinted glasses. They're seeing it through the position of a reader. And right. um, and sometimes you're just, too, you're just too close to it to really yeah. see the imperfection. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, so yeah. so uh, I, I honestly think we got off the topic, though, the pip presented but i'm gonna so i'm gonna i'm actually gonna come back with uh with my critical question for for for, for pete yes <clears throat> okay you've done nanowimo you are on schedule or scheduled as some people would say schedule. on oh. schedule uh to uh to hit 50k that's great you know give yourself a fucking cookie here's here's my biggest <laughs> my biggest gripe about okay. nanowimo Oh, NaNoWriMo takes place in the month of November. That's one month. There are 11 other fucking months. <laughs> what do you plan to do? And I say that because I know too many people that they make NaNoWriMo the only month they where write? they write. And, they, and the excuse they give is, well, see, Nano's different. I can use Nano as an excuse. No, fuck you. You either write... Or you, or you, you, you're, you're a hobbyist, and and I, I, this is the only time I pull the elitist card, because I get really uptight with people who give me excuses as to why November is the only month in the year where they write. The whole point, at least for me, where the way I see it, the whole point of NaNoWriMo is to give you a taste of what it's like to work on a deadline, to to demand um, a, a daily word count for yourself, to get you in the regimen of writing again and again and again. It's like saying I'm going to be a I'm going to be a martial artist and I'm only but I'm only going to train for the month of November. Right. And then I'm going to do this one competition at the end of the month. I'm going to win it, but then I'm going to eat donuts and drink and drink booze for the rest of the year. But man, come come November, I'm fucking Bruce Lee. And that's not the way writing works. It's never the How way about writing losing works. losing weight? Can you lose weight like that? Uh, you can try. <laughs> one month. One month. Uh, one month, right. one month out of the year. My nano fight. <laughs> right, no, so, 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 so T, let me let, let me talk to that. And and you're right. You're yeah. absolutely right. I totally agree. Um, and and in fact, I've been doing a lot of introspection. You know, when I'm not writing and I'm like trying to sleep, um, <laughs> uh, I, I've I've thought about what does this mean? Like, so so what am I? What so what now? Like that's what you're saying. What now? What now? And what now? And and I think nano what what nano has been teaching me is how fast I write like how fast I can write and still write legible shit, right? Right. Um, what kind, what time it takes to do <clears throat> what I'm capable of and the fact that, you know, I'm going to hit 50,000 words in a month. Fuck, I can write. I mean, I can really pound words out. So yes. I've, I've learned that about yes. myself. So yes. I, it's like I've, I've come to the conclusion that, shit, I can do this, right? Yeah. I don't have to do 50,000 words a month. Yeah. I can do 10,000 words a month. That's fine as long as they're great 10,000 words a month. Exactly. I'm, I'm, I mean, even if you said, I think it's, right now, it's designed to be a confidence booster. Right. You can do this thing. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you said, I'm going to try to sit down and write a thousand words a day. Yeah. That means that in roughly three months, you have 90,000 words. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's, that is, that is respectable. And the best part of all is it takes you, it takes you just under three months. Which means mm -hmm. you have another nine months to play around with in, 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 in another, in another, in, in another project. And even if you're, but, but the, that's the thing is that I want to, I want to make sure if you're, if, if you're doing nano, then yes, take advantage of the lessons of nano. But I think the biggest lesson that's, that gets missed by a lot of people is nano is not about writing your, writing your passion one month out of the fucking year. Right. It's getting you in the re, in, in, in the routine, in the regimen and giving you a taste of what it's like, because there's some people that go, Oh yeah, I spent a year, I spent a year and a half in your first book. I'm like, that's great. You realize you're going to have to write your second book within six months. Because that's right. exactly what happened with us. We right. wrote, when, when did we, how long did it take us to write Phoenix Rising from beginning to end? It really didn't take too long. It took, it took about a year. But there's two of us. Yeah, there were two of us. 
<laughs> and we were, work, we were working in two different time zones. It was when we got in the same time zone, everything got fucked. Um, the editing was great, but the productivity took a, took a shit. Um, the thing is, though, is that we, we developed – that's the thing. We developed and we wrote Phoenix Rising, I would say, within, the, within a span of roughly a year and a half, two years. And then they said, that was great. We need another book. In six months. In six months. And so we had to basically take two, almost two years worth of work and do it in six months and make it good. And when people came back to us and said, oh, yeah, we loved, we loved the second book even more than the first, we just kind of went, oh, hmm. because that gives you an idea of the, of the demand. It was six months to write it, but then they go, well, why does it take so long to release it? Well, then you go through developmental edits, covers. go for covers. You've got to get, get a another, spot, in another the, thing, you know. spot in the calendar of publishing. And, or... and that's, 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 the joys of, that's the joys of fiction. With nonfiction, like with Twitch for Dummies, they were like, "No, you've signed the contract. You're on." And right. then it's right. and then it's from 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 beginning to end. What was it's, it? Three months. It's um, um, it's it's roughly five months from beginning to end. And I wrote in five months. I wrote over eighty thousand words. Yeah. And I had to cut. And I had not not just not just write write edit get the figures edit the figures put them all together do sidebars, do research. interviews, research. I did all of that with what would take some people two to three years to do. I did in a span of five months. And, and that's and, and that's T, nonfiction though. That's nonfiction. Though. And T, you work a full-time job too, right? I mean, you have a job job. <laughs> I work a full-time job with a two hour commute one way. Oh. Uh, but, but He's that's- on a train. I'm on a, train. on a train. So you can write so, while you're on the train. Exactly. Of course, that's, <laughs> okay. how, that's how I effed up my foot because I was at one point I was carrying around two I was carrying around two computers and an iPad. Ah. And uh, when you're walking, when you're walking nearly a mile from Metro station to your job, um, that's going to put a strain on an old man's foot. Oh, uh, dude. But right. here's the thing. I had, I had the commute home. I had the commute back. I also had my lunch hour. Right. Um, <laughs> I took advantage of every time, every little scrap of time I could get. Hey, but you that's for learned? nonfiction. That's for nonfiction. With, um, with fiction, you're given a little more wiggle room. But the point I'm getting at is, yes, you can do this. You can do this, Pete. Here's, right. thing Here's is a question from the chat room. Uh, and T and Pip, I think you guys are probably the best to answer this. You guys started writing, like, Phoenix. How old was your daughter? Or how old were – or were you able to – how many years ago was that? Phoenix was uh, seven years ago. So, you sh oh my God, she would have been. Sick. Basically, the question is: Shooting Is it possible to be like a, a, a decent writer and and have and be a dad yes. and, and and like and, have and actually up. raise a child? Yes. Well, you put them to bed on a decent hour. <laughs> that, 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 that's the first thing. Um, um, Darla Hudson. Darla Hudson wrote. Five of her books on her iPhone in the toilet. Yes, yep. so yes. that's right. That oh, no. is a yep. great example, actually. Yep. That's yep. good. Sometimes actually, you let me grab what you can. But when can you, you can? But can you have a life and be a writer? And um, and and and, so, and some people are shocked when they go, "Wait, I thought you were making your living as a writer." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, no. There's this thing. That's adorable. Until, uh, yeah, I know. It's in the, in the, it, uh, until we get this thing called universal health care, that ain't happening. Um, yeah. But the thing is. Um, Yes, it is possible. Now, there are going to be times where you have to make sacrifices. Case in point, I'm, I'm, getting, uh, a, I'm getting quite a bit of pressure for people to get on and play Destiny. You know, hey, T, we're raiding tonight. Can you be there? No, I've got a deadline. Yeah. Um, uh, I, got a friend who's like, I got a friend who's like, hey, T, I really want you to try Fallout 76. I can't. Why? I'm writing. And there's another friend of mine who says, yeah, I can't seem to write. I can't seem to get my words out. And I said, I said, I can't yeah, talk dude. to you. I'm writing. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and no, and I said to him, I said, well, what were you doing last night? Well, I was playing Fallout. And what were you doing the night before? I was playing Destiny. Well, it's amazing. I said, do you know what time. I was doing then? I was fucking writing, man. <laughs> yeah. And he yeah. was like, what are you saying? I'm saying, I'm saying it's called sacrifices. And yeah. sometimes and discipline. And, yeah. and, and, and discipline. And sometimes it yeah. sucks balls. But you know what? If you if you if you want to be a writer, you got to man up and be a writer. Yeah, and I can't, and I, I can't remember what it was. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say I can't remember what it was. I made a Facebook post something about. I took a break. I made a Facebook post something about writing and how like how wiped out I was. And and one of my friends replied, he's like, "Well, there's a waste of seventeen words." I was like, "Fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing on Facebook? Get back right. to work. And, and, and you know work. what? 
um, that's, I would say of all the things that I do in social media, cause you know, I'm, st I still produce podcasts. I stream, I do all that. But the thing that, that I have, I have to struggle to find time to do. And I love doing it is blogging. Mm -hmm. Cause I remember one time very early in my career, I did a blog post about, um, how tough it was being a writer. And I sat back and I was like, I just blogged 2000 words about, about how tough it was to be a writer. Be a writer. And I the just writing. fucked up. Irony. Irony. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, yeah. That's when I got my ass off a live journal. And, uh, and I, I just, but, but that's the thing is that you're going to make some sacrifices. As I say all the time, when people say, when people say, oh, well, you, you know, if they come on my stream and they go, oh, you suck at this game. I go, all right, let's, let's back up a bit. I'm not a gamer that writes. I'm a writer that the games. games. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, that's, you and, know, um, and so, it wasn't so, Destiny for Dummies. It was Twitch for Dummies. So right. back off. Tell your mom to cut the crusts off the PBJs, and maybe you won't be as cranky little shit. <laughs> so back on his caffeine. Pip. Speaking of cranky so, little shit. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Wait a minute. So one of the, one of the things that I'm doing for, for for from here on out. So one of the things that I'm doing to to open up my time to do to do writing. Uh, and Mike and I have talked about this. And it's part of why Mike is running the show in November. Is he's getting ready because next year, season six. I told Mike, I said, I'm only producing 20 shows. If yeah, Mythwits is going to have, if Mythwits yeah. have more than 20 shows, you do the other 20. That's but fair. that's all yeah, I'm going to do. Fair. It's totally fair. And it works. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to so miss production being takes time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I mean, there's a reason why there wasn't a new episode of Happy Hour from the Tower for all the month of October until, right. and, and then the most of November. And then it, it dropped last week. It, it was, and I just said it was because of it was because of uh, Twitch for Dummies, right? That had to take priority. Mm -hmm. And as much as I love podcasting, as much as I love, uh, I mean, Pip Pip is shouldering the work for uh, Tales from the Archives. I miss doing it, but the thing is, is that it's it's like I I I have a, I had other projects I had to do, and um, and that and and the thing is that the the the, the train trips. Are, are, are sacred moments for me. I have to be writing on there. So what I'm doing, I've given myself actually a month between <coughs> the, uh, Ooh, the end shit. of, um, the end of, uh, thank you. Thank you, baby. The end of Twitch for dummies. And now just so I can recharge the batteries, because that was writing. December 1st. No, not December 1st, November 28th. Oh, okay. And, uh, and once November 28th rolls around, I'm, I'm back into, into my, into writing fiction. Right. Which means that right now my my train trips, I'm just writing evergreen topics for the for the for my blog, so that I can program in once every one every other week, and then I'll be able to have the blog up and running while I'm actually writing. I mean, Fantastic. you just you, and that's what you've got. That that's the hardest part of writing, and I think that's the other lesson that gets lost in some people with Nano. It's about time management. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know? hey, good segue. Time management. <laughs> <laughs> right, Mike. <laughs> yes. So let's hold on. Let's let's talk about stuff. So so real quick. Um, so one of the things that that, uh, that Dave develop Dave is developing Archivos as as we talked about earlier. Um, is a great tool for for writers. Um, it's a great tool for uh, gamers and store any kind of story any kind of storytelling. Um, I did some work playing around with it. I didn't have enough time uh, before NaNoWriMo, and then once NaNoWriMo hit, there was no time to to, to spend on that. But uh, one of the things that I am going to do when the 50,000 words drops, uh, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go through Archivos and I'm going to lay some of this stuff out so that I can stay consistent. Um, so I can, I can take my, my 50,000 words and actually lay them out on a map, lay out the characters, make all the connections and stuff so that as I go forward and then I go back through and make sure that everything's continuous the way I wanted it to be because I thought of stuff later on and I go, oh, wait, I'm going to have to fix that early on. But whatever, I'm going to keep going, right? Um, I'll, have a, I'll have a map, character map, story map, map map to, to, to work and timeline map to work off of. Uh, so Dave, tell me, you said there's some new stuff coming with Archivos too. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. You're, the timing of this particular podcast is perfect. Uh, uh, the, the devs worked all summer long on improving uh, performance and stability of the app. And now the thing moves so much more quickly and everything is pretty much rock solid uh, at this point. They've used the last two months uh, to do a complete overhaul on the display modes. 
so the story web, the living map, and the timeline are all getting a major overhaul. Um, I, can, I can give you a sneak preview, an exclusive sneak preview, uh, if that would be something that is appropriate for the show. The oh, screen's uh, on you, buddy. <laughs> ah, share right. your screen. Get right sharing, in. sharing. Where is sharing the is caring. Absolutely, yes. and this is how I roll. All right, so let me share and pop over. Here's Archivos. Um, everybody seeing this? Uh, this is a story catalog where people have created story oh, settings in Archivos. Oh yeah, and that's a lovely segue. Now this was this is a this is a perfect demonstration of the new uh, uh, display modes for the British royal family. Because oh, wow, the old, that's cool. In the old display mode, it was a cluster. Let me show you the new display mode for the story web. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. oh, look at right. that. That's so there's mom. There's mom in the center. Mom. Hello, mom. Hello, mom. She's Hello, got a mom. The queen mother. The description, the elements that she's connected to. No so shit. Oh, so Dave, that's nice. That. Yes. That's it's slick, Dave. It's that is gorgeous. so slick. And and as you double click, it's, it's lightning quick. Wow. The other cool thing is we're adding uh, uh, layered filters. So you can show me just the characters that are involved, oh, or the characters and the locations, uh, the characters you. and the events, or you know, screw the characters. I want to see the locations and the items. So there's wow. the Imperial State Crown. Nice. So you've got this total control over the filtering and display. Uh, relationships, same way. Show me just the familial connections, and of course, it still is applying. The, uh, the other filters that we've got going on over here. So it's a layered filtered effect. Nice. So, nice. so that is uh, the section is here. Also, uh, the search criteria is no longer looking at just names and titles. It's also using the description. So if I type in S-I-S-T, uh, you're going, but what does King Edward VIII have to do with, with S-I-S-T? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, let's see. Sister. Well, Princess Margaret. That's a good, hey, hello. All right, this is the staging server. This is not production. So <laughs> something's kind of funky going on here. But anyway, um, the, the search criteria searches descriptions now, so it'll search items inside of there. Um, okay. the, uh, let, me, let me show you uh, my game world, because this is a great place. I run my, my game through here. So this is Palathos. Uh, and uh, so you've got your city, you've got your districts, you've got your district administrators all laid out here. Uh, you can navigate through. Here are uh, locations within here. Um, there's also, uh, no, no events on this one. Yeah, let me show you the living map because that's the sexier bit. Uh, yeah, this, this is the new living map with the new interface. Uh, so where's Palathos? There it is, bam. So here's the main city uh, with each of the districts laid out in there. The zoom is now a mouse wheel zoom, so you can just oh, zoom in yes. and Good zoom deal. out dead mm. sexy and smooth. Um, you can also, I used a, a, a Dyson map to set up an adventure. Uh, uh, and so now we've got uh, this this beautiful and God, it's just so clean and crisp now compared to the way it used to be. Each it's room is mapped smooth. mapped out here. Uh, I can see the descriptions as I'm running the game. The full profile gives me all of the descriptive information. Uh, so the game adventure is laid out here. Um, the timeline is much cleaner as well. Uh, with uh, related elements that actually work now. So when you click on these related elements, they will take you to that element and you can get oh, the information nice. you want in there. Yeah. Yes. So this is all the sexiness. Yeah, Dave, uh, I, didn't, I didn't want to so. say anything before, but there was some of the stuff that was a little hokey and it looks like you fixed it all. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no. No, that's that's good. the total that's truth. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So, so look, so, so here's another beautiful thing is that you know when I do when I do release this story because there's the whole other end which Mike we're gonna go a little over tonight fuck it I don't care so <laughs> okay um, it's it's my party but uh, <laughs> but when um, when I when I do the ma when I do the archivist layout I can share that with the audience and like I was saying before when they want to look at backstory type stuff they want to keep track of things because dude there is a lot of shit going on and a lot of interpersonality stuff going on um, it'll be easy for someone to go. They're in a chapter like, 
who was that again? They can go <laughs> click on it and they go, oh, that's the guy at the thing. Yes. Right. And, and, uh, well, yeah. there's going to be a bunch of stuff that you came up with that doesn't make it into the book. Right. And Archivos is a great way to pad and include that extra bonus content. And you right. can even set it up so that the setting is private, but is only viewable to a select few that you decide. Yes. So, so people like on like a, a Patreon or something like that? For example. <laughs> for <laughs> example. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Fantastic. And you can also collaborate, you know, if you decide to open this up for another writer, you can actually give other people editing rights and you can all work in the same setting together. In fact, by, I'm going to say January 2019, uh, so two months from now, we're going to have real-time collaboration in Archivos. So two wow. people in the same setting can <laughs> see each other working at the same time. That would be nice. so good for the ministry short that stories. Been, that would have been great for the ministry. Oh. Would have been. Hey. What, what's Wooda? What's, what do you mean Wooda? Wooda? It's, You've got power, Will? fans. Sit at the work. We're talking. We're talking back at back in. Uh, back in the beginning. Back in the beginning. Back okay. in the day. The archives. Back all right. Twenty eleven. Twenty. All right. Here we go. This. This is how it would have helped us. I'm gonna. I'm gonna come clean on this. So. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> so we're we're writing the Janus affair. Okay. We're writing the oh, Janus no. affair. Oh no. Love this story. And we were in the. We were in like the uh, the second. I think we were in the second pass. And Pip. Uh, Pip, is, Pip is sitting over there. I'm making she's, a spreadsheet, man. She's making a spreadsheet. It was the Stone Age, okay? And uh, and she wow. says, she says, "Hey, hon," <laughs> and it's the way she said that. Hey, hon, <laughs> and it was more like, "Hey, hon," parentheses, please don't blow up. But she said, <laughs> "Please don't lose uh -oh. your shit." Please don't lose your shit. But she said, "Did you know we have eight kids?" in phoenix rising and i went what? you know the ministry seven the ministry seven has eight kids <laughs> and sure enough we went back and we looked and we counted and yeah we, wrote down all we the had names. we had eight kids we're like oh she shit. said what and, and i said i said give me the manuscript and she said what i said i'm gonna fix it and i retconned that punch motherfucker that punch that red cotton button and um and <laughs> on the fly we wrote this entire little side story about how Jonathan and Jeremy, you know, the two twins. <laughs> Thank one you, would Steve. hide. <laughs> one would hide when the when, when Eliza and and uh, and and Harry would show up. So Eliza and to Harry do a head only, count. Yeah. Right. And they only saw seven kids. That's why they got called the Ministry Seven. And as we're writing the spin-off of the, of the Curse of the Silver Pharaoh, Jonathan and Jeremy are in there. They're a lot younger, but they're in there. And I went, honey, she's like, I'm already on it. Harry can, <laughs> see, Harry can never see the two of them. Harry never sees the two of them in the same room. No, but no. we've decided that somewhere in, 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 the, in the prequels of, of, the, of the, uh, the Verity Fitzroy adventures, we are going to have that scene where they suddenly go, wait, there are eight of them? <laughs> what? Do you know what? You know what? Though you know what's awesome about that is, is that is a mistake that you guys have turned into something really cool. And Absolutely. And, <laughs> and it's just carried over not mistake. one but two series, so it's awesome. Eight. That's a beautiful thing. Now that would never, that would never happen with Archivos. Exactly. That's right. and it, Unless and we it, wanted it to. Well, exactly. that's that's why we were in the Stone Age, man. We had didn't have it. <laughs> and you know, it's it's oh, funny. It's it's funny. stuff like that that actually leads to some really good stuff. Like in Deadpool, when they ran out of money to do a scene, that the first Deadpool, they ran out of money to do a big fight scene. So you know, you know when he had all the guns in the back of the the taxi. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the taxi pulls off. Well, that was because they couldn't afford to do the big shootout scene, so they just wrote it that way, which made the scene about a fucking thousand times better exactly oh yeah, yeah. made it even funnier made it <clears> even <throat> funnier so absolutely, absolutely. yeah all still right pete. Have, still would have rather yes <laughs> pete, why don't you is there anything you wanted to pick out any uh questions there were a couple of questions in the um oh, there chat were, is there anything you wanted to pick out and i want i want t and pip to talk about their new book um okay let's, which let, one let's let, I'll, I'll, I'll let you talk you got about two books you got which two books one? Yeah. what a great response yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Which one? Yeah. Which one, my good oh, man? Which first one? world author Which problems. Which one? Oh. Hey, it's, it's on you. You talk about whatever you want to talk about. You go, baby. Well, we just released the Books and Brawn dossier, which oh. is the short story collection of all the tales of the archives that we've written uh, since 2011. Um, but we're also working on book three of the Verity Fitzroy series. It's going to be called The Secret of the Monkey God. And, and 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 Pip once again breezed so fast by the by the pimping of the dossier, she failed to mention that we actually wrote an exclusive story just for the print right, version. Oh, uh, nice. It's just for the print version. It is called "The Fault in Our Stars." If 
F A F A W L T. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. Torquay. And it's set in Torquay. And uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it at that. It is a love letter. It is a love letter, and we had a lot of fun writing it. Oh, cool. um, so you gotta buy the print version. But you, but yeah, we can only get that in the print version. Um, but yes, I will be. I will be. Uh, I, I will be back to the fold. I'll be coming back with uh, the third one. The the the, the, the secret, secret of, of the monkey secret god. Secret of the monkey god. Um, oh, hey, I'm writing a fifth book. Uh, you're writing a fifth book. I'm reading the fifth book to the books of the order. Okay. To, to after Geist. Carry right. wow. on with the guys. Awesome. Yes, doing, I'm doing, she got she got the rights back. I got the rights back. So so now she's yes. So now she's doing. She's finally doing what she's been wanting to do for the longest Audio time. Books. Audiobooks. Yes. Nice. Okay. And and uh, and so Pip, Pip's uh, I'm books. On Rafe. Go, yeah. Spectre and Geist are done. Wraith is in production, and so I should have it finished January next year. The four books. Yeah. And so I want to awesome. get on a fifth book. Guys, who's the reading? Are you reading them, or is I'm somebody else reading them? Yeah. She's okay. reading them. I'm reading them. She's reading them. Who else reads it, your other books? Or is it you guys? Oh, uh, originally, originally it was James Langdon who read the first four ministry books. Yes. Then when books five and six came out. And we uh, were kickstarting our own. And we were kickstarting our own stuff. We, 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 we took that mantle on. Nice. And some people didn't care for it. Some people were like, oh, it's great to have the authors read. So it, it goes back and forth. People, are, you uh -huh. know, pe people can be you fickle can never, about it. You can never please everybody. Please everybody. Um, yeah. So uh, in January and in January 2019, uh, Twitch for Dummies is coming out. Uh, ironically, uh, I don't know how this happened, but but this is actually the first solo novel. Uh, novel. This is my first solo title. In, in for a while. Yeah. You did Twitter for. I did. I did. I did all of Twitter, and I did uh, Sam's Teach Yourself Twitter in ten minutes. That was the last solo social media nonfiction thing that I did, and that was back in two thousand nine. And um, and now I'm writing, and and now I've written Twitch for Dummies. Um. It's just to a, prove you still can, man. Yeah, right, exactly. You still got it. Um, also, all the advance gets to you. <laughs> yeah, all the advance gets to me. Uh, but the but I will I will tell you this. It was um, while I was writing Twitch for Dummies, I really found out how much I missed Chuck Tomasi, because man, sharing the workload on a Dummies book makes a world of difference. Because it was because doing the doing the, uh, the the third edition of Podcasting for Dummies was was pretty much a rewrite. It was a rewrite because the book was ten years old. There it is. <laughs> no, that's no, that's is. the second edition. Yeah, and that's that old. one. And we and and we were, we, but we. I started getting bigger and bigger royalty checks. So I reached out to the dummy. The second people. renaissance of podcasting. Yeah, yeah. Second, third, eighth, whatever. <laughs> whatever we're up to by Every, now. Annual. The annual. The annual renaissance. The annual renaissance. Yes. And I and, and I called I, I called uh, Steve Hayes over at uh, over at Wiley and I said, you know, I've been getting some royalty checks for for podcasting for dummies. He's like, yeah. We've been talking about that, and I said, I, I, I said, I said, come on, man, the book is ten years old. It needs an update. I mean, we were still talking about writing RSS by hand oh my in gosh, the second that edition. Is the, that is the Stone Age. So, oh, back in the day, yeah. back in my pounds? day, if you wanted to syndicate a podcast, you tied your fishing wire under my two cans with a fishing wire, and then I was syndicated. Just pull hard, and, it, and the reception gets a lot better. So, um, so yeah, uh, so we, we, we finished podcasting for dummies and that was when I pitched them Twitch for dummies and they, they hadn't been hot on it for a while. And then in May, that's when they reached out to me and they said, we'd like for you to do this. And what's the release date, January? Um, the release date on it is, uh, bah, 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 bah. The end of January? No, no, not, not, not the, I can tell you it's not the end of January. I can tell you it's not the end of January. <laughs> the well slow, machine slow over there. your roll the slow, slow your roll woman slow your roll I'm, I'm well, slowing. Well, yeah well, but anyway so my book my book will be coming out next year for, it's 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 Edelon. it's it's generation two of what are we okay i've padded enough it's january 14th january 14th <laughs> okay nice. all, january right, 14th. So, <clears throat> all right we're gonna go with one last question and that is from John Walker, and he wants to know Hi, what you what you guys do about marketing. Huh. Like, uh, do you, you get uh, what is it? What does it say? It says yeah, I can't novel, see it from here. You have it ready. It's polished. How do you do the marketing plan? Okay. And, and is that to me? I'm assuming that's to me. Like, what am I going to be doing? Um, well, I don't are you pinned? Well, well, are you are that. you are you indie publishing or are you uh, or are you gonna um, polish shop it. and shop it? 
I don't know yet. I don't know. What would you guys suggest? Okay. <laughs> Here's a question. Here's a question. Yes. How marketable yes. is it? Yes. Does it fit in a genre that they're going to like? Is it, is it a niche or is, or, or is it marketable? It's a fantasy book. High, well, it's, not, it's not exactly high fantasy. It's, it's, it's kind of gritty. It's kind of a gritty fantasy book. Quentin Tarantino meets Lord of the Rings. Oh, that's that's a good way to pitch it. That's a good way to pitch it. It might be worth a shot. That I'm I I shit you not. When I started doing that, when I started doing that, uh, when I was doing like a, a, when Moravia came out, I I was pitching it to people as Crouch and Tiger, Hidden Dragon meets Pirates of the Caribbean, and I had so many authors come to me and go, "You realize how that cheapens the work? You're using <laughs> you're using pop culture to just yeah. Uh, yeah exactly yeah exactly that's you're right." <laughs> Now, now, hang on. Thank though. you. Hang on. Within about within about five years, yeah, I would see the that. same authors, and they would be like, "Oh, this is Star Wars meets <laughs> Lord of the Rings," and I'm like, "I bet you're not cheaping your work now, you little bitch, huh?" You know, but yeah, no. But yeah, even 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 our agent would say, "Yes, that's what you do. That's how you sell books. Is you use pop culture yeah, references because you're more likely to be able to know that people have at least a concept of what it is." Right. Yeah. Um. Like for example, right now the the solo work that I'm looking for uh, and that I'm that I'm shopping. He's stepping outside the genre. I'm stepping outside the genre, and uh, I I still don't know what genre it falls under. But the thing is, it's set in the world of esports, hmm. and and I'm that's I why I'm, that's why it's 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 a thriller set in the esports industry. Okay. And nice. and I I would I would say I, I would describe it as what if Lance Armstrong did esports. Okay. That, that, that's that's nice. the best way I would describe nice. it. Nice. And um and and I'm I'm running with that, and I'm 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 that's to me that is marketable because right now esports is huge. Um, you know, Ninja. It's, it's was only on, getting Lance Armstrong. It's only getting, not so much. <laughs> what was that? Lance Armstrong. Not so much. Not so much. But not you so know much. who he is. But you know who he is. <laughs> A little well, I mean, like, I mean, like Ninja was on the cover of last month's ESPN. ESPN magazine did an entire issue just on esports there is a multi-million dollar esports mm -hmm. arena in vegas and if you haven't seen the pictures of it dude you've got to see it it's ridiculously so cool. in short yes if your genre yes. is hot take a shot at new york if, Why you, not? if you think so, it's marketable so well, marketing got, yeah. so yeah. how do you market then which right. is going back to john's original question uh, research research you gotta look you research gotta look what? build your email Shh. No, no, <laughs> no. We're talking about shopping. Get, to, uh, We'll get to you in a second. No, he's talking about marketing. There's we're talking about stuff. marketing to an agent. If you're marketing to an agent, you got to research the agents that are actively looking for titles. Yes. Okay. All right. That's okay. the, and, and also that they represent, they represent works that you, that, that you do. For Can example, I also suggest building your brand now? I know it sounds like a terrible no. marketing thing to do. Oh, wait, no. hold on. Define, what is that? So build yourself a website get yourself yep. on instagram start building an email marketing list because sure as eggs if you do start to get a nibble they'll say so what's your reach right they will right. ask you that what is sure what how many eggs. people how many people can you reach <laughs> what, what what is a what is a acceptable menial number uh, i don't know you want to be saying some thousands of thousands something. five thousands thousand. something well, I'll tell you this. There, there, part like of my your podcast. A How piece, many listeners yes, do you get? Right. A piece of my strategy is that there is also a role playing game that I have developed that rides hand in hand with this story. Now, these are not characters anyone played. It's not. It's not our adventures in in whatever land it is. This is a novel all to its own, but it's set in the world of the role playing game. And I happen to work for or work with or part of TSR Games, the new TSR Games. Uh, so the likely that this game will be released by TSR Games, which gives me an instant ten thousand person you reach. Go, just you go to like that. Yeah. There you go. See, so I think mm -hmm. I kind of want this. He's done a lot of his homework. He's, he's yeah. doing all right. And that's, that's good. And I mean, that's if good. You, and if you're looking for an agent, these are all things you put down. You know, right. just give them numbers. They love numbers. Yeah. Even if they don't understand the numbers, they just right. like numbers. Um. So 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 that's the kind of research that you're doing now. Um. That's if you decide you want to shop and you got to shop for agents. Mm -hmm. You got to shop for agents. Don't worry about, um, if you want to go with an indie press, that's fine. But honestly, and I hate to say this about the indie press, but they're, they're right now competing with Amazon. 
Amazon has made self-publishing not only easy, insanely easy, but because Amazon carries these books without question, it also makes it easy to, to, to get yourself seen. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I would avoid doing with agents and with, uh, and, and with, 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 uh, with people in general is touting yourself. This is a, this is a, what not to do touting yourself as a best selling author, because the minute somebody hits Amazon's best sellers, they start throwing around the term. I'm a best selling author, which is absolute horseshit because there are some tiny tiny markets where it's yes. very very easy to be the best you can ah. cheese that so easy right the the the, the best sell and, and i and it drives me nuts and that's why I'm but, but but does it just drive you and other authors nuts no I, no i don't think new new york new york knows what they're doing no. as far as segmenting i mean, I mean Amazon people that are outside of the industry get worked up about somebody saying I'm a best-selling author when they're best-selling on Amazon. Does, I don't think, does, I, I don't think it means care? anything. I don't it, think it means anything. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. Unless um, you can say New York times. Yeah. Unless you can say New York times. And that's the other thing too. Or maybe that the, 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 the thing that I, the thing that I think is a total cheese when people use the term best-selling author. Um, I was at a, I was at a conference and someone was doing a conference on how to be a bet, how to make your next title, a be, how to make your book a bestseller. So I was, I, w I went to this, this woman was represented by, by our agency. And I said, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can't learn something. I'm sitting there and she's going off and she's, she's on all kinds of weird tangents. I raise my hand and I go, I'm writing fiction. How do I make this formula of yours work in fiction? Oh, I have no idea how to do it with fiction. <laughs> oh, I'm not in my head. Right. Then I said, then I said, but this is your, and I said, but this is your formula for being a best selling author. And I said, I'm curious. Are you a USA Today bestseller? Yeah, that's the no. one. Are you a New York Times bestseller? Well, of course not, because I would only say New York Times. I said, then what bestselling are you? And I said, and then that's when she said, Amazon. Mm. Oh, right. And when she said that, about a quarter of the room just went, oh, for and I saw all the pens go down. <laughs> <laughs> and she was shooting me a look. She was shooting me a look. And I'm like, hey, look, I'm not the one trying to game the system here. You're right. the one gaming right. the system with titles. Right. Yeah. And I'm just saying, I'm just saying that it's, it's a very, it, when you start, when you start fudging with your numbers, yeah, you need to be very clear with, with agents. Look, this is what these numbers, you might have to sometimes explain. This is what they, they love numbers, but if they start making assumptions, that's when you have to step in and go, hang on a minute. Yes. For example, hang a podcast a listener does not necessarily convert to a reader. No. Automatically. No. No, they no. do not. They do not. They do but not. in the early days of podcasting, podcasters getting books, that's what New York assumed. They were like, yes. oh, one podcast listener, one buyer. You got so, a million downloads? Oh, that must mean you have a million listeners. Nope. So so I have I have a question about agents. So going the main route, going going, you know, industry route with an agent, is that agents are really helpful then? Do they really they look out for you? They they I'm assuming they're a good thing to have. They get you into places that you cannot otherwise get. Yes. There okay. are not very many New York houses now that read from the slush pile. Um, most of them are only accepting agented manuscripts. So straight off the bat, you're being shipped around to places that you just, as an indie or a single person, cannot possibly get into. Um, right, right. You know, but always research uh, anybody that you're, you're pitching to make sure that because there are scam art agents out yeah. there mm -hmm. um stories crop up pretty regularly about agents that are not on the down up down low yeah your low. your best friend uh to making sure that up you're and up. A, up and up there um, we go the, sure as eggs yeah. sure um, sure. your your best friend for um for checking the legitimacy of a of a of a publisher and i uh, um and an agent is going to be writer beware. Okay. Yeah. Writer beware is a, is, a, is a fantastic resource for that. Now yeah. let's say you decide, you know what? I'm going to independently publish this. Cool. Um, cool. First off. Awesome. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, we do that too. You know, we, we are New York published. We are also self published and we're good with that. They are called hybrids. We're hybrids, darling. We're like a Hyundai. <laughs> right. um, we, we run get, an we get 60, and gas. Yes, we get 60, 70 miles to the gallon. Um, <laughs> and plug us in at night. Plug us in at night. <laughs> hey, easy. Hey, now. <laughs> easy. <laughs> hey. Um, and, uh, but, but the thing is that uh, here's going to be my first thing. Don't skimp. 
don't cut corners. No. Um, what way? Covers. Um, covers. Like pay editing. for a cover. Pay, pay for a good editor. cover. Editor really good. Yeah. Not now. Here's the thing I learned. Pay for a cover. Paying for a good cover is one thing. Paying for a cover that's within your genre is different. Is different, and it is more important. So when you go to like, say, you're writing an urban fantasy, you go to the top hundred urban fantasy. Look what you're seeing. You're seeing oh, chicks with leather jackets with fire coming out of their hands and a demon behind them. If you see that twenty times, then you know what the reader is expecting to see. Right. Um, oh, so you got to give them that. Yeah, you got to give them what they want. Otherwise, they'll look Fuck. at it and they'll go, I don't know what this is. I don't like understand a... it. I don't <laughs> it's, understand it. It's too it. artsy. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah but you've got you know like what? a split second, then they're Pete, done. Pete, you have your cover artist already. I do? Yeah, you do. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> also, also, Scott you know... Pond, hello. Oh, there you go. I could do that. I could um, do that, yes. I don't know thing. if you're talking. We know a lot of artists. Could be, you could have been talking about Ben Bishop. I don't know. Or Starla. Or Starla, yes, right? There so come on now. There are plenty of people. But just no, make sure our, that you our understand. Man, our genre. man Scott Pond. That's it. Right. <laughs> you also have. You also want to make sure you have good editors. Yes. And yeah. uh, and the other thing, the other thing, and I cannot stress this enough. You also want to get a good layout artist. Yes. And the layout artist, the person who does the interior. Um, we were recently at a book event, and we saw this one woman's uh, book. It was word. And it was, it, it looked like she had, she had formatted the interior using word. Um, and she and, was, so and, proud and, of it. and it was, oh and she God. was very proud of it, but it was a brick. It was a freaking brick. Um, but it wasn't because she had a lot of words. Uh, it was because she had like, like spacing and a half and she had like 10 points of space and every at every paragraph and i'm just like and when you're in oh, the I'm not sure. double space yeah, one exactly. part. i'm not sure if you know this but uh when you indie produce your own book every page counts and that racks up the price of your book so if you yes. have a brick yes. that's twenty dollars no one's gonna buy that so right. i'm, I'm right. speaking from experience on that i i moravi was too big i'm right. the first one to say it i mm. you know Ooh, if i could right. go back Easy. in time I could Easy go back in I know, I know. But if I, <laughs> I, I could go back in time. I could go, son, you got to break that up. You got to break that shit up. That's a trilogy, motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. So, and, and you ain't an omnibus level, motherfucker. You need to, re you need to relax that shit. So, so recording it as an, an audio format, I should wait to see where I'm going with it first, right? Because I, I'm assuming yeah. like, like the big houses and stuff have rules and they control that as well. Like if, you, if they're going to sign you, they want... Do you They're want to hear want my to advice rates. on audiobooks? Because I can Absolutely. give you some this is good. sterling advice on audiobooks. Please. Make sure that if, because big houses are going to want all the rights. They want them all. Mm -hmm. If they take your audio rights, if they will, if it's a deal breaker and you're like, no, I really still want to be with this house, set, give them something in the contract that says if they don't exercise those rights within, say, a year, then they come back right. to you. Okay. Because that was the and that's most, what the agent does. That's what the agent does. That was yes. the most irritating <laughs> oh, thing no shit. Oh, about the books of the order is that they oh. sat on the rights and they sat on the rights. And I said, hey, could you just give me back my rights? And I, this was before audiobooks became big, you see. Right. So it, right. did, it wasn't really a thing that authors were thinking about. And it was super irritating because it was money literally sitting on the table. They weren't using them, but they also weren't giving them to me. And right. that's why I fought to get my all the rights back because i was like Bitch. Now, there's another, there's, yeah now there's another tip i'm going to give you here too uh if you decide to go with uh, independent publishing before you before you hit print and start running off print record the audiobook first oh, yes that is a good one because as you're reading you're going to be reading something and suddenly go wait wait hold on where did that typo come from and then oh, you're gonna catch another right. typo and then you'll catch this one sentence you'll be like was i high when i wrote this yeah and then and then you you know and then and then at the end you'll have a really tight audiobook but the manuscript will be ready for layout and all that stuff then you send it off for layout and then you lay it out even Excellent when i advice. yeah even Excellent. when i was reading geist which is oh, a yeah. new york published book new york published i'm still finding so one page I found four errors and I was like, Bleh. Oh, so wow. just reading it aloud is an excellent way yeah. of finding all of those. Cause, things. cause let's face it. Editors are people too, right? Yes, I mean, they are. Yeah. Yep. Doesn't matter if they're there's new never, and, and yeah. are, they, so, are they really, <laughs> they you tear your they, heart out. They cut your you, heart out. You know who they usually are, Dave? 
They so, are underpaid women who are living in New York on under thirty thousand a year. So, and, and I got news. For, and, and I got news for you, Dave. One of one of those editors is KT Brisky, and you know she will hunt you down and she will fuck you up. I she withdraw is. the statement. I yeah. Withdraw yeah. The statement. yeah. Ava Green ain't got nothing on KT they're, Brisky. They're, I'm just saying. They're mostly human. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Hmm. <laughs> cool. But, but right. yeah, but 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 don't don't yeah that that would be my biggest thing. Don't cut corners if you're if you're self if you're if you're self public. Yes. Well, I can tell you all. I can tell you right now. I have a, apparently have a lot of friends who are authors. I've made a lot of author friends. So Thanks. in all levels of Go success and range. So what I'm gonna do is when it's I'm gonna concentrate on getting a fucking thing done. Yeah. And then, and then once it's done. And and I've gotten all the so. editing, and people have read through it, and and, and the thing is is good to go, and I'm ready. I will reach out to all my my good friends, and I will say, hey, this is what I'm thinking about doing. What do you think? Okay. Um, have us back on the episode, and we'll talk about yeah. how to yeah. book, right? How, okay. Where to go, where where to go now? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, we could do a whole Absolutely. show on just marketing for indie publishing. Jeez, oh, yeah, yeah. that would be I mean, holy crap! We really could use this book as the format for not every Mythwits episode, but every you know every month or two, we could come back and say where are you at. This is what I'm doing now. Yeah. Here's editorials. Yeah, yeah. Now, here's tell them what to do. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Wow. It's it's the it's the how to get your shit done podcast. <laughs> <laughs> how to get your shit out the door podcast, right? Somebody yeah. And I mean you know you guys you know the um the at the melting podcast and everything else. So oh, yeah. You got a lot of friends. Absolutely. Right, yeah. Fantastic. And I'll just come yeah, out and pimp I'm myself. Going. I do book layout. <laughs> nice. Do okay, good. Layout. He does beautiful book, book layout. Nice. Very good. Mm, Very good. He gives good layout. Gives yes. good lay. Yes. All right. So everybody, right, are we speaking, playing a game? Or yes. What? Yes. What Hold doing? on. Speaking of pimping, pimpy stuff. Let's start with uh, Team Pimp. Pimp it. Where's it? Links. All that good stuff. Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences dot com and PJBallantyne dot com, where you can buy our eBooks and our print books right now. Yeah. Uh, T Morris. That's T E E Morris dot com. Relaunching the blog with uh, actual blog content coming out. Uh, Twitch dot TV forward slash the T monster, uh, where if you're lucky, you will actually see us recording the shared desk live. Yes, we do it on Twitch now. We do it on nice. Twitch now, and we. The I mean, we record a podcast. The on first Twitch. like forty five minutes is the actual podcast, and then we stick around for an extra hour just to shoot the shit. Uh, so it's extra content, but you got you got to be watching live to to catch that. Uh, there's also happy hour from the tower dot com and the shared desk dot com. Uh, yeah, I, I said the shared desk the shared dot com. Yes. <laughs> and uh and i will also throw out this <coughs> quick picture the shared desk.com <coughs> uh there's also you're in the pits of despair yeah, no, um my uh, my my, my twitch my my um uh, my twitch channel and happy hour from the tower have an official sponsor it's Hangry Gamer Gear, and you can find out more about them at HangryGamerGear.com. They have gamer, they have gamer stuff in colors other than black, and I love that. Okay. I, I absolutely cool. freaking love that. And use some- Happy Hour. Use Happy Hour at checkout. You get fifteen percent off your 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 deal. Beautiful, nice. beautiful. And so no no more uh, uh, writing boot camp. Was it writing boot camp? What was it before? What was th- what was that? Your original the podcast? Fantasy writers boot camp. Oh yeah, no, you're talking about the survival guide to writing. Survival guide. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. That's it. I thought that's been back. dead for years. God, yeah, I know, dead, I know. Yeah. I'm just joking. I'm joking. Oh, wow. So, so I think Dave, Dave, a decade. I think the last. I think the last episode dropped in 2007, maybe. Oh my or two, god. I was no, uh, no, no, no. It was. Um, Shit, I can't remember. Uh, you I, guys I met during apartment. that. Okay. I was in the apartment. Oh god, I was in the apartment. That was a long. That was a long time ago. I can hear the capital letters. The yeah. apartment. The apartment. Yeah. Yeah. So, Dave, tell us where do we get Archivos? Uh, you can check out Archivos at Archivos Digital. Thank you. Uh, you can <laughs> go directly to the app. You can go to app dot archivos dot digital and just dive right on in we are on twitter at archivos stories uh we're on instagram at archivos dot stories uh and you can also check out the the backlog of the archivos podcast network at www.roundtablepodcast.com all right noise noise all right fantastic all right so mike mike yes let's uh Let's do that game thing. I'm gonna put the picture, put the pretty picture on you, and go. No, not not go yet. Oh <laughs> Jesus Christ! 
Shit. Pad, pad. Pad, baby, pad. <laughs> Padding the time. Hey, there's music playing, but we don't know. We don't have any. Uh... <laughs> all right, so, all right. Let's go back. Let's, let's, let's try this again. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm killing the people with music. All right, go ahead, Mike. It's game time with the Mythwits. My name is Michael Kafis, and I'll be your game master. This evening, and tonight we'll play What's My Age? The Author Edition. Oh, God. Oh, God. I, will give you, I will give you the names of six New York Times best-selling Man. authors. Oh, my God. And each of you must take a stab at guessing his or her age. We will play golf scores, so the person with the lowest error differential at the end of the game will win. I may throw out a factoid trivia question here or there pertaining to each of the authors. Okay. The first person to answer correctly will have an error point shaved from their score. In the event of a tie, the person closest to the age of author number six without going over will reign victorious and have the distinct honor of being and i did i did write this ahead of time of being the first draft editor for pete's new book <laughs> oh god <laughs> wait 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 everybody's a winner <laughs> right. everybody's a loser <laughs> uh, yeah. I thought the thing, is, the thing is i'm competing against pip so i can't use wikipedia shit uh, <laughs> right. that's right keeping it honest go okay on. here we go i know we're running a little late so uh, but, you know, the, the, the masses do, do demand uh, their game. So, oh, our first author this evening mm -hmm. will be Dan Brown. And first, we will start with Dave. Dave, just give me the age of Dan Brown. 57. Dave says 57. Uh, Pip, how old is Dan 62. Brown? 52. 52. No, 62. 62. 62. Six the accent. 62. <laughs> Right. Um, T. 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 Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna go with. Um, Fifty-five. Fifty-five. And Peter. Oh man, man, you guys are hitting it right in there where I want to be. Uh, I'm gonna say Ooh. fifty-six. Fifty-six. <laughs> All right. Hey, not bad. Somebody was one year off. Oh, and my. that person would have been, actually would be and is still T. Morris. Oh! So, Dan Brown is, in fact, 54 years old. Wow. Nice. So, I feel uh, like he's been around longer than that. Yes. <laughs> Maybe he was writing as a 12-year-old. I don't know. He was writing as a young man. He, he, had, he had several books before Dimitri That's right. Jerry. That's true. Now, can anyone tell me Dan Brown's middle name? First person. Aloysius. To, uh, Aloysius. First person to yell out the answer. Wins. But nobody wins, because you're George. not going to have time to look it up. Ben so, okay. <laughs> Daniel Bernard Brown. <laughs> no, it's Gerard. Oh, Gerard? Yes. As in Gil. All right, so, uh, Peter, I'm going to let you keep score, okay? Oh, I wish you would have told me that before. Okay. All right, well, you pull it up. I, I have access to it. I have it pulled up. No, so no, I, no, I got it. I got it. Go, go, go. I got it. I got it. Okay. Let's score. Uh, Dave had three. Pip has eight. T has one. And you have two. Wait a Slow down. Pip has what? Eight. Eight. Okay. T has one. One. Okay. And you have two. Two. Thank you. All Our right. next author, and going up first this time will be Pip. George R. R. Martin. Oh my gosh, he's in his sixties. I want to say he is. Mm. <laughs> you I can say whatever you want to say. I think he's sixty-four. 64, will you still love me? Will, will you still, still feed me yeah. when I'm 64? And T. 68. 68. And Which Pete. means he better start fucking writing real soon. <laughs> yeah. Shh. Sorry. Peter. Is that my outside voice? Peter. 37. <laughs> 72. <laughs> 72. And finally, David. 71. 71. Ooh. I'm going to laugh if he's in his 50s. Cause, man. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he's not going to laugh because he don't look like he's in his 50s. No, no. no. Somebody's very correct. He better get a guy, got this goddamn book out quick because he is 70 years old. Wow. wow. Yes. So uh, that would be Dave with one point. Uh, Pip with six points. 
T with two points, and Peter with two points. Nice. All right. Uh, 72. Jesus. And uh, oh, we're going to go with two more before we give the scores. Everyone can see the scores if they're watching live, but uh, for our audio listeners, we will yeah. go two more rounds and give you the right. scores. So, yeah. our next author, uh, possibly, unless he's been dabbing, dabbing in some voodoo or other dark arts uh, with his age, possibly is younger, Ernest Klein. Oh my god. Mm. Ernest Klein. Oh, Ernest okay. Ah, what? hmm. What a, oh, shit. I know that name. I was see a right? picture of him. Let me think. Yeah, what does he look he's, like? He, yeah, he's... And we will be going. Uh, T gets to go first this time. Ernest Klein, I'm putting at 38. 38. All right. And Peter. Ernest Klein, is he uh, uh, Ready Player One? Yeah, yeah that, player that is one. correct. Yeah. Okay, All right. And Ar- Artemis. Artemis is you... good as... No, not really Artemis. Good. No, no, that's that's uh, that's Andy Weir. Oh, that's Andy Weir, right? Artemis Armada, was really good. Armada, Armada was uh, oh. was was what Ernest was Klein's. Was that was good? His, uh, no, it was his attempt to catch lightning in a bottle a second time, and people were going, "Wow, this is misogynistic as fuck." And oh uh, shit, okay, <laughs> I'll be probably missing that one then. Okay, yeah. Ernest Klein. He's a young guy. He's got to be thirty six. Thirty six, and uh, Dave. I'm gonna say forty. Forty. And uh, Pip. I saw him on that that thing where they were digging yeah, up ET's yeah, yeah. Uh, that the video ET game. game. Yeah. So that would make him. I reckon he's forty-two. Forty-two. All right. Uh, the best person we have would be off by four this time around. Wow. Ooh, that's some high scores uh, here. So that would be Dave off by six. Oh, oh, he is 46, in fact. Wow. Jeez, old wow. Dude. Yeah, I was thinking he was in his 40s because wow. he had so much nostalgia for that damn E.T. Yeah, game. Yeah, E.T. game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. You're right. Good, that, was, that was good thinking. Uh, so, all right, that would be, uh, what do we say, Dave 6. Uh, Pip was off by 4. T was off by 8. And Peter Ouch. off by 10. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. You're yeah. very kind. This is like playing golf. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I blew this. I blew that one. I should have. I'm, I'm thinking. Fuck. Ready Player One. Right. He's. Yeah. Right. R A. Yeah. yeah. yeah take a mulligan is. there, buddy. Okay. Sorry. Uh, does anyone know Ernest Klein's last name? I mean, middle name. Sorry, middle name. <laughs> Klein. Them. Um, <laughs> Too late. Pac Man. Is it? No. <laughs> no? Right. Hey. Does anyone know what uh, George R R Martin? What does the R R stand for? Oh. Uh, he Ronald made Reagan. that up. He made that up because he wanted to be like R.R. R. Tolkien. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's what I heard. Mm. Rob Roy. Well, a according to his Wikipedia, it's uh, <laughs> Raymond Richard. So Really? Yeah. God. Yeah. Pretentious fuck. Robbie the Robot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Pete. Okay. Uh, uh, so, all right. We're going to just move on to our next guy. Our next guy. Who is actually guy? a ga- who guy? is actually a gal. I was oh, about to yeah. say, yeah. give us some gals here. Hey, really? hey, 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 I'm not gonna, here. I'm not gonna do you dirty like that. <laughs> so this isn't gonna be some sausage hang bestseller list. <laughs> okay, here we go. <clears throat> me, me, me. J.K. Rowling. Oh. I knew she'd be in there. How? Rowling. Oh, did you know she'd be in there? Okay. I knew she'd be in there. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right. So J.K. Rowling, and I think we are at Pete gets his uh, first guess. Forty-four. Forty-four. All right. And next, Dave. 53. 53. Going into the 50s there. Uh, Pip. Uh, 46. 46. Okay, give me a hint, Mike. Does she have hot flashes? No, I'll go ahead, Mike. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and T. You're trying to calculate when Harry Potter first came out and how old yep. she was when she first read Harry Potter. 58. <laughs> Fifty. Oh, man. You tripping? <laughs> Yo, he's stone cold tripping. Well, um, this is the time where the uh, ding, 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 ding. Somebody nailed. Somebody nailed J.K. Rowling. Hey now. Hey, so what I meant? Does that get up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> who nailed J.K. Rowling? You ask. Easy, easy, Mike. Why? None other than our our distinguished uh, set of pipes, Dave Robeson. Oh. Is she really? She is 53. Really? Oh, I knew yeah. she was in her 50s. God damn it. All right, so go ahead, Mike. What, what are the points? The points are uh, Dave 0, uh, Pip 7, T 5, 
and Peter nine. Oh. Boy, I just pulled into the lead. Pulled into the I'm um, not the lead. Pulled into the back end there. Well, give it <laughs> almost no, that's no. What she said. That's what J.K. Rowling said. Uh, yeah. me, well, me and Pip are hanging out in the back yeah, there. Can... <laughs> we, have, well, we have two more to go. But before right, we do, okay. before we do, Peter, would you give us uh, okay. give us the yeah. scores? So for our audio listeners out there who can't see the beautiful score on my screen, uh, Dave is in the lead with ten points. T is in second place with sixteen. I am in third place with 23, and Pip is down the bottom with 25. I'm just too kind to people. I think they're too uh, yeah, they're yeah. too yeah. young. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, so Dave has to screw up massively, or have I got I got to knock these two out of the park. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Get to game ground. You could, and right. maybe maybe if you know this answer, all right. you can uh, shave some points off. Here we go. Uh, what is J.K. Rowling's other pen name? Oh god. Shit, I have the book upstairs. I have the book it's, upstairs. It was the casual vacancy. Yeah, the casual vacancy and it's three not two nope. Nope. one. Nope. Sorry. It is Robert Gal Galbraith. Galbraith, Galbraith yeah. Mm. Yep. Does anyone know what the K stands for? Pet Marina. What? <laughs> <laughs> Catherine. Sorry. I think Catherine. Uh Catherine is correct or Kathleen. I don't know, Kathleen. That's Kathleen. I don't know. Yeah, that's Kathleen. not Catherine. Kathleen, Those Catherine Catherine's not Kathleen. Kathleen. Yeah, I'm no. sorry, Kate. Pip. I tried. Kate. All right. I'll take you home, Kathleen. <laughs> All right. Our next, our next, oh, no. I Do I need to give the, uh, can we give the scores already? Yeah, we did. Okay, we did. we're on our next author. Here we go. Anne Rice. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. oh, shit. She's got to be up she's, somewhere. Yeah, up she's there. a fucking vampire. What's <laughs> when did her book come out in the seventies? Didn't it? I don't know. She's like hundred and three. Oh, no. Yeah, Dave, we are back in you going first. How old is Anne the Vampire Rice? Seventy-seven. Seventy-seven. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. Pip. Oh, she's got to be. I think she's in the seventies. Uh, I'm going to say seventy-five. Seventy-five. And Mr. Morris. 71. 71. Damn it. And Pee Wee. 75, 71. I'm, I'm going to go 72 because I'm in there too. So I'm, I'm going to say 72. You're in there. You are in there. You're right. You're in Did there. anybody nail Anne Rice? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, actually. well, somebody <laughs> did nail Anne Rice, actually. Oh, yeah. my God. Who Dave, nailed, who nailed Anne Rice? Dave, it? <laughs> did. Oh! <laughs> Dave Rose, ah, Dave, she's Dave, you pimp on this show. Yeah. He's so good at this game. He's so cold. Dave is nailing all. Yeah. Dave is nailing all the bitches. Yeah, right. I Jesus, hope he doesn't Dave. nail the next one. I'll tell you that right now. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stephen King. All right. So, all those archivos uh, brings the bitches to the yard. Okay. <laughs> That's right. It's that voice. It's that goddamn it's that buttery goddamn voice. voice. Buttery, yeah. buttery man voice. Yeah, it, is. <laughs> it is. All right. It so, is. Mike, I, what are my scores? I, I want him to record a wake up alarm for me. <laughs> Mike, wake up. No, He'll never wake up. And I just pop the like, boner on here. And right, he's just going to be like, well, let me, let me knock this one out, and then I'm up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. All right. So that said, uh, Dave has zero. What are yes. you, 12? Yes. 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 Yep. Pip, Pip yep. has two. I already knew mm -hmm. that. T has six. Oh, my God. What? Yes. Peter has five. Oh, man. I can't catch mm -hmm. a break. All right. I just keep uh, sinking. <laughs> does anyone know uh, what? Let's see. What is a. Uh... Hold on. Da, 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 da. Oh, does anyone know the birth name of Anne Rice? Ooh, no. Let's start. <laughs> hey, 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 hey Robinson, put your hands up. Put your hands in the air. I don't need you typing. Hey, um... Siri. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, no, no. you know what? <laughs> this is the most. This is the most bizarre thing I found. Right? Jill Are you Corn. ready for this? Yeah, had us. Her birth name, Howard Allen Francis O'Brien. Whoa. Um. Yeah. Whoa. She was named Howard. Uh, Howard? That's. The... Listen. Hey, All right. hey, Johnny Cash would say that's how you learn how to fight. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia girl will lie. Named Howard. Girl named yeah, Howard. Wikipedia never lies. Girl yeah. named Howard. <laughs> Is it Bryce Howard? No, that's different. No. All right. All right. So here we go. All right, let's wrap Last it up, man. 
<laughs> last last one. The last one. one. The last New York Times best-selling author. Oh God, if I. And I don't want any. I don't want any eyes rolling. No, I'm just kidding. Scott Sigler. Oh, oh God. Sick. How really? old is? The Sig. Mm. Physically or mentally? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's got to be physically because, yeah. Shh, 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 Who's first? Shh, shh, shh. Which could be a trick question. He's probably like 400 years old. Yeah, I was about right. to say. <laughs> yeah. We're going He's nocturnal. And Rice right. to, yeah. All right, so Pip gets the first guess. Mm. Now, when I first met him in San Francisco, he Holy. looked about... 12, 12. But he's aged yeah. a lot through publishing. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> through yeah, offering. Yeah. I want to say. He had hair back then. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. Nope. He never had hair. That motherfucker had never had hair. I'll tell you a funny story about that. Um, I'm going to say he must be in his 40s. I would say 43. 43. All right, hey, Robinson, get your hands in maybe, the air. Maybe even a bit older. No, he's not no, cheating. No, Come on now, Mike. Come on. I don't know. It's so hard to tell with no hair. That's really yeah. how I judge men. It wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't see, surprise, look. Hey, look, it wouldn't surprise me if, if, if Dave Robertson, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he nailed Scott Sigler. Yeah. 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 I mean, come on. Just tell us All right, how Dave, it is. Dave, what do you got? What do you got? You're talking to me? Yeah. Yes. What are you going to go with? No way. I thought you were Pip, and then it's T.I. Then it's yeah. No, you, you want it? You want that? All right. All right. I'll bring it, yeah. All right, T. Now, you roomed with him, T. You must know all of his secrets. Yeah, I spooned with him. <laughs> How did he feel? Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he felt spongy. He's kind and of he bony, right? Eye. He, 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 he felt very spongy. And I remember this right. one eye was blinking at me. And it was talking about something about chicken scissors. Right. Um, so he's like 10 millennia old. Yeah. He's one of the old ones. Yeah, he's one of the old ones. He's one of the elder gods. Um... <laughs> 39. 39. He's going to kill all of us. Peter. <laughs> I I think, I, it, I've i talked to him many times, and I think he's about my age, so I'm going to throw 48 on there. That's the age I am. So I think he's very close to my age, like very close. All right. 48. Mr. Robert's son. 46. 46. If he says 20, if he's actually 23... <laughs> all right well listen first of all guys i want to say this oh god one of you has in fact nailed, nailed. scott sigler dave 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 is it dave is it dave is, it, dave? is, it, dave? is it not dave oh dave so. did not know dave. Is it this guy it is not t oh my god it is not pip oh! it's this guy that's right oh, it's that that's guy. my boy it's it. that guy wow. you may have nailed him with him but pete nailed him all right <laughs> Nice. Scott nice. Sigler is 48. Wow. Yes. He looks good for 48. Me? It's because he's bald. It's because yeah. he's bald. No, that's because he drinks the blood of virgins. Oh, that's, that's true. Right. That's true. Uh, so long as he doesn't do the porn stash. Yeah. So long as Scott doesn't do the porn stash. When he does the porn stash, I'm like, oh. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Same it's here. Dick. It's Stop. a travesty. It's a travesty. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we we Pete and I uh, made a made a commitment to go to uh, Sigfest next year. That's it. That's yeah, we're going that's next year. Happen. That's it. It's oh on. God. It's done. God be with you. God be with you. It was nice Thank knowing you. you. Uh... <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, real quick, Damage. does anyone to just for a last minute shave? Does anyone remember or know oh what his first monster story title Earthcore. was? Earthcore. Yeah. Earthcore. Earthcore. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Earthcore. We sold it at the Dragon Moon Prius Prius. Yeah. Sorry. It was tentacles, huh? tentacles, and more tentacles. Oh, it was. Oh, wait, the one he wrote as a kid. Uh, uh, his first, first yeah. I thought story. you meant published novel. He didn't say right. published. Did <laughs> right, now, this may be a more common one, so get ready to yell it out, because there may be a point difference here, okay? What was his mother's occupation? Ooh. Teacher. No? no that was no. his dad. That was his dad. He's a coach, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Peter was right. Peter gets a point yeah. shave. Right. Damn! Damn. Wow. He was you, a didn't, you, didn't, you didn't spoon him enough, T. I guess I didn't. You didn't get all the good <laughs> stuff out of him. No, <laughs> no, hey, oh, hey. Oh, here's the really problem. Hard for me to ask questions, I was, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, God. Oh, here's, but here's, oh, oh. And Dave is down. Dave is down. Here's, here's, <laughs> the, here's the scary I part. The, I know too I'm, much about <laughs> him. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I put together a whole, a whole bunch of trivia about him, too. So, yeah. Um, all right. That's all right. Let's, let's, let's do the scores, buddy. The breakdown, you guys. Uh, right. Peter and Pip, 
are tied at 27. Wow. Yay! Good, good news it. is you're tied for last place. <laughs> Hold on, wait. Give me the points, Mike. I got to put them on the scoreboard. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, that was, oh, that's right. Uh, two for Dave. For Dave. For Dave. Pip gets not, uh, five. I was yep. too kind to him. T gets nine, <laughs> and uh, Pete gets so zero. Strong, and then I just, I just, I mean, T I gets just nine. Yeah, T gets okay, nine. T gets nine. Ooh, yes. I screwed wow. the pooch. I screwed the pooch on those you, last you, couple. Yeah, and it was Siggy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. So now, all right, our our final scoring. All right. Oh, Pip, bringing up the rear, looking good, honey. Um, that's what how women do it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. And pegging. Driving them she's, in before hey, them. And she's she's and, pegging and, the score, Mike. Pegging, pegging. the score. Yeah, and, 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 hey, <laughs> bad news, Pip. Yeah. I mean, right up your rear. No. Oh. <laughs> is your husband. Oh, God. Wow. T. Moritz. Oh. With a scant 31 points. Yes, yes. Yep, yep. How apropos. How, how uh, And then Pete is, just the, Pete is just, just a, 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 hey. a, a, a scenery away. Um, Pete's staring watching. at it all. Hey, hey. I'm a number two. What can I He's say? A number two. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 with for, with a with a very respectable twelve points for first place. Taking Jesus the lead Christ, in this yeah. human yeah. centipede. Less than half of my score, Dave. You get yes. Ah yes. <laughs> God save the queen. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Lovely. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for playing I'm, I'm our good, game. Good at guessing. Author's ages. Yeah, I'm author's in ages. like Flynn, motherfucker. Yeah, that's right. Where's this shit? If only it was an Olympic sport. <sighs> yes. If only it was esports, right? <laughs> <laughs> Go buy me a lottery ticket right now. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we. I have I have all of the uh, in in our Facebook chat I have all of the links posted again. But uh, each of you get on the line and tell wait, wait pick your top two where to find you's one more time. Uh, Archivos.digital and uh, uh, roundtablepodcast.com. All right. Oh, pjballantine.com and ministryofpeculiaroccurrences.com. Twitch.tv forward slash the T Monster. And tmorris.com. All right. Fantastic. And you can catch me at M I K E K A F E S on Twitter. Catch the Mythwits on Twitter. <laughs> and catch Pete trying to slam some words on, on the old paper. Hey, man. You can, you can find me on Instagram uh, forward slash Aetherforge. A E T H E R F O R G E. That's how I keep, uh, that's how I post my updates and such there. All right, Mike. And he's on, and he's on Instagram. So roll hey. that beautiful footage. There you go, buddy. You have just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Mythwits. We are live on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m., not 9.30 like this idiot thought for whatever reason. Lawless. <laughs> Eastern time. Lawless. Thank you. Yeah, uh, starting again in January. <laughs> Please ask us or our guests questions or just banter with our other misfits. Uh, if you miss our, our live show, you can always catch the Encore episode on Facebook or on YouTube. Find us on Facebook and Twitter as Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. If you do not have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite pod catcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it is appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread the Mythwits love over the entire planet, because the planet needs more Mythwits. Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcasting Network. Check out tsrpn.com for more cool shows. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, and don't try and make it a uh, thousand what is it ten thousand times a day do not listen to it ten thousand times a day <laughs> make sure to check out other aether forged at us at aetherforge.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list thanks everybody for listening and tell your friends to tune in and until next time pete 
Mike is going to have to read this 20 times to me before he's allowed to read it again live. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, thanks, everybody, for a great fifth season. We're going to see you in January for our sixth season, which we plan to level up this motherfucker one more time, uh, just like we did this year. Uh, and the only, th the only thing else I got to say is 41,802 right this second. You're almost Sweet. there, buddy. You're almost Get there. It. Get almost. it. Hit it. Hit it.